Zoning issues that should be considered for a new project in a central city location include, it's another one of these uh, choose all that apply. Uh, we have easements, FAR, overlay zones, asset map, setbacks, meets and bounds. Um, these are all related to surveys and zoning. Uh, so they are all potentially possible things that you might imagine choosing. Um, so this is one of those examples that we were just talking about how they will choose words that are certainly part of the discussion. Uh, and so that makes it a little tricky. Um, but only three are actually zoning issues. So again, this is that parsing of the thing is like there it says zoning. So that's a very specific, that's part of the zoning code discussion. Uh, it's different from the sort of full contextual site discussion. Uh, so the three answers are going to be FAR, floor area ratio. So that's a, a, a way that not every uh, zoning code in the country uses FAR, but most do, and they use it on the exam. Uh, and it's the concept that you have a certain amount of square footage on the site. And one of the ways to control the mass of the building is to say, all right, if we say you have a 10,000 square foot site and you have an FAR of one, that means you can build a 10,000 square foot building. Now, it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to build a 10,000 square foot building that goes lot line to lot line. In fact, it probably doesn't mean that. You, for other reasons, like setbacks and things like that, you probably can't do that. But I could do two 5,000 square foot floors uh, and place it on the, on the site. So it's a way of sort of controlling the overall mass of a building uh, through the zoning code. And there's a couple other systems that are like FAR, but FAR is the sort of more famous one. Uh, the other obvious one is setbacks. I just mentioned them. So that's side yard setbacks, front yard setbacks, uh, rear yard setbacks. This is definitely, when you, if you think of an image of a place in the city uh, or in the suburbs or uh, any, any sort of normal sort of uh, place that's not a super unusual um, example, like if you think of a, a place that say uh, retail stores that are um, on a city street, well, what's the front yard setback? Well, it's probably zero. The set yet setback is right at the sidewalk. And why? Because the zoning code creates the desire to have uh, uh, people excited and buying on the street. They want to create that, that kind of quality. And then you think of a suburban house. Is that right up on the sidewalk? No, it's set back. And it's literally set back because the zoning code asks them to set it back. So the, when we think of the look of a neighborhood, by far the biggest impact is going to be the FAR and the setbacks. Those are the things that make our cities and our suburbs look the way they do. So then the big question is the next one, and it could be easements, it could be overlay zones. Uh, asset map is actually just a thing that you do. It's not really part of the zoning, so that's not a, a potential answer. I mean, it's a good thing to do, is to map all the assets of the neighborhood, but it's not really part of the zoning requirements. And meets and bounds is another sort of interesting one, but meets and bounds is actually a type of surveying. Uh, so it's more of a survey question, not really a zoning question. It's a really interesting survey question. It's one of those ones where if you're way out in the middle of nowhere and the, it's going to cost too much to have the surveyor really figure out you know, where it is in relationship to other stuff, you might just do a meets and bounds, which would be where you start at some known place and then you go a certain number of feet in one direction and it'll say 502 feet and it'll give an angle. And then you get to that spot and then it'll say, all right, uh, now we're going 615 feet and then it'll give an angle. And then eventually it'll come back uh, down to there and all of those numbers of feet and all those angles will create what is effectively a survey. So meets and bounds, really interesting uh, way of doing it. It's the old school way of doing this. When I say old school, I mean like 1700s old school, uh, but it's still done uh, in those sort of unusual locations. So it's not meets and bounds, because that's not about zoning, it's about surveying. So the question really is between easements and overlay zones. 
Uh, and it turns out it can't be easements, so it's not easements. Uh, why isn't it easements? Easements seem a lot like zoning. They are a lot like zoning. They are restrictions on a site uh, that sure seem like they should be uh, uh, right out of the zoning code, but they're not from the zoning code. Easements are actually uh, legal descriptions on the land. So uh, if I ha own a piece of land and the utility company wants to put a uh, power line through, they would actually write a contract with me and I would sign that contract and it would ride with the deed. So it becomes part of the deed. It's an understanding of the overall uh, uh, sort of legal description of the land, but it's my land and my legal description. It's not the zoning code telling me to do something. It's that I have signed a contract with the utility or with the next door neighbor or with whoever. So easements are private deals that ride with the deed. Now the ride with the deed is really important because that means that uh, Mark tries to pull a fast one on me and uh, you know, makes, a, makes a special deal with me that I can uh, access uh, my, my site uh, with a driveway through his, his thing and I pay him a bunch of money for that, but we don't actually sign the contract and it doesn't end up becoming an easement. Uh, and then he turns around and sells the property to somebody else and they say, hey, look, I got the deed right here. It doesn't say anything about you having access through my property. And Mark walks away with the money, right? So uh, this is one of those things. It's an important element. You'll find easements that might have been written in the you know, 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. Uh, they ride with the deed in perpetuity until something is done to take them off. Uh, so easements, really likely possible thing to be dealing with at this point. It's just not a zoning thing. So okay, what are overlay zones? Overlay zones are something that they are very much likely to ask you about. Uh, this is a situation where you say, all right, I have a whole series of zoning rules, and those zoning rules say, I, with this size of a site uh, in this kind of district, I can put in uh, 72 units of housing. But the overlay zone may say, yes, but if you make that affordable housing, we'll give you 10% more. So it's not that it's specific to that location. Most zoning maps, most of the issues are specific to a particular location that is a particular district. The overlay is saying, we have other issues that we want to uh, encourage or discourage uh, and we're just gonna lay those on top of these other situations. So it could be affordable housing, it could be green roofs, it could be uh, any number of sort of things that the, the city has decided, the town has decide, decided that they want to encourage or as I said, discourage. And so it's a way of giving a little nuance and kind of uh, opportunity uh, in, built into uh, the, uh, the zoning code itself. So it allows uh, things to be less strict uh, and provide opportunities for various developers. It's become a big thing around the country and it's also become a thing on the exam. So it's worth sort of noting. There's a couple different terms that may not be called overlay zones, but overlay, uh, some people was overlay regulations, things like that.